my name is Councillor Terry Cox. And my name is Councillor Roy Evans. And we're directors of the Tal Kingdom on the ring road just outside Hull. That's right. Let's do our jingle first, uh, Roy. OK, then. Let's make Sunday a fun day. That's right. And if you like bread, then why not try Broomfield's bread? That's right. It won't soak up the liquid from your scrambled eggs. That's right. Now, well, uh, Mr. Reeves and Mortimer couldn't make it today as the sermon in the church was a bit too exciting, so we're taking over. And uh, we've got a lot on, haven't we? That's right. Now, it was an exciting sermon. We're just coming down from it That's ourselves. right. Now, uh, remember, as well, that Sunday is a holy day, and if you've got no to do, then why not try reading the Holy Bible? It's a right good read. Yes. Now, before we go any further, let's ask Councillor Cox. What's in your cupboard, Councillor? Well, at home? Yes. Bags of blood. Nice one, you Councillor. Know, you know that's what's in my cupboard. Yes, cos you do work for the... I work for the Blood Transfusion Service. Councillor Cox helping in the local community. Now, have you got the records, Councillor? I thought you had him. I gave him to you in the church. I didn't bring him. Have you left him in church? You've left him in the church. Oh, no, well, I'll have to go and get him on the bus then, won't I? You get off then. It'll take us about half an hour to get there and back. It doesn't matter. I'll tell him the stories about the story about my toffee. Well, when you got that toffee, it's stuck in the back uh, of your... So you go and look for them. I'll start no, the well, story. I'll be as quick as I can, but I can't promise anything. Right, well, it was a hot day and... So I bought hey, some... I just found him outside door. Oh, bingo! Right, well, bingo. anyway... Well, we're in luck now, then, aren't we? So what's the first one? We'll start off Cox. with a record by Rod Stewart and Maggie May. And Maggie May. And I wonder, Councillor Cox, how does Rod Stewart satisfy his tiling needs? Well, an interesting question. It should look no further than Tal Kingdom on the Ring Road just outside Hull, where there's a vast selection of tiles, both red and blue. Well, let's just imagine a visit to Tal Kingdom. Aye. I'll pretend to be a customer. Right, I'll just put the music on. Hang on. Hello, sir. Welcome. Welcome to Tal Kingdom. How can I help you? Yes, uh, I need some new tiles for my kitchen work surface. Certainly, yes. certainly, sir. Will you be requiring red tiles or blue tiles? Well, what do you think? Well, um, I think you should combine red and blue for a fancy finish. All right. Well, that's my tile requirement satisfied. I'll just pay up then. No, sir. You won't just pay up. You must come through now to the adhesive section. Now then, what tiles have you chosen? Red and blue for a fancy finish. Ah, two colours. Then you'll need our universal adhesive. There you are, sir. Well, I must say, I've never been so efficiently served nor more satisfied in my life. That, sir, is because you chose to shop at Tal Kingdom on the Regal. Hey, the soap channel. Well, I've just heard Vic and Bob pull up on their horses back from the church. That's right, they uh, have just come back from the church on their cart. So, we'll play another record. Uh, Let's... Councillor Evans, what is it? It's Let Love Speak Up Itself by the Beautiful Sound. Here we go. Don't whisper love and dream of wedding bells. Don't do all the talking. Let love speak up itself. Mm. Let love speak 
Hello, you're speaking, uh, or rather listening, to Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer live on Radio 1. And thank you to Councillors Evans and Cook, who filled in very nicely for us there. And Councillor uh, Cox was wearing a nice teddy, wasn't he? Wasn't he, he we're looking lovely? Mm. Well, we do apologise for being a bit late, but uh, it, we've just gone back from the church, and you know we're still on a bit of a high. That's right. It was a very, a very good sermon, and... Uh, I was I particularly went into a bit of a frenzy about halfway through, didn't I? You did, didn't you? So it's going to take a bit of coming down from oh, that, I, certainly. Bob, yeah. my, my seat's a bit low. Could I borrow your Bible? Yeah, here you go. Thanks. Oh! Anyway, we're joined today by some very interesting guests. We've got Dorian Crook, who's a human joke machine, and I said machine. We've got John the Vicar, who's a pop poet. John McVicar. No, John the Vicar. And we've also got James Brown, who's launching very soon a new magazine called Loaded. Will we speak in the last two a bit yeah, later? Yeah, we'll be we'll taking the to them a little bit later. Later. Anyway, before we go any further, let's have some hit pop news. <clears throat> Brian Ferry has a new pair of shoes this week, and early reports say they're a little bit tight. Mm, but it's very soft leather, so hopefully they'll wear in all right. How would you wear a pair of shoes in, Bob? I'd simply wear them. Really? Till they were worn in. Just wear them till they get one. Well, you know, oh, you could, but per I personally rub a little bit of margarine onto the inside. It's just Chris Rea has had a mattress, a very unsightly mattress, removed from his front lawn at last. Yeah, at long last, there have been a lot of complaints there. So three cheers to Chris, and of course, the local authority arranged for that removal. Well done. And Tina Turner is beginning to regret having double glazing windows. That's right. She says the windows were all right, but she wishes she hadn't done the HP deal. Yep. Maybe it would have been best for her to pay up front. What do you think, Bob? I don't know, but uh, there's the advantage of withholding payment if you've got HP, I suppose. Well, that is a point. Well, Tina, if you want to phone in, we've uh, got leaflets and relevant forms, and I think the answer is to get out and do a little bit of work, Tina, and just pay out right up front. That's right. We can also reveal that Ice-T surname is, in fact, a uh, title. Um, is that it? No. Is there anyone else? Well, uh, do you know any? Jazzy B. Well, what about Malcolm X? Do you know his? Malcolm Xylophone. Xylophone, oh. that's right. Jazzy Bay was Jazzy Blue Cardigan. Jazzy Blue Cardigan. So there's a little bit of news for you. But now we'd like you to listen to the new offering from the Wonder Stuff, which is called Hot Love Now. Stuff and their orchestral version of uh, Hot Love Now, a new single coming up very shortly. Bob, have you ever been hot? Yes, I was hot when I was in Spain. I remember. Once. Have you ever been to Spain? Yeah, I went to Bilbao. Oh, any good? It was all right, but it was a bit too windy. There's yeah. always a lot of wind coming off the mm. sea there, mm. and I never know what to do to keep. What do you do to keep to fend off wind? What in? The well, country? if you're out in the country walking or something. Ah, stand behind a cow, something like that. Yeah. Oh, well, that was work, wouldn't it? Would it? Anyway, we'd like to introduce you now to what we are calling a human joke machine. Yeah. His name is Dorian Crook, and just as by way of an introduction, we're going to ask Dorian if he can now give us five jokes in 30 seconds. Off you go, Dorian. Certainly, lads. I had a terrible journey here tonight. I got a what, train up from South London. Can you believe that? And it frightened me to death, to be perfectly honest, because I'd never driven one before. Well, Not as bad as yesterday, though. I took a South London minicab home, and all the way back, the driver's picking his teeth from a catalogue. Can you so, believe that? Yeah, still, here we are in the West End. It's like Piccadilly Circus out there, isn't it? The right. beggar came up to me earlier on. He said, excuse me, mate, I haven't eaten for four days. I said, you should force yourself, mate, you'll get ill. Oh. Still, at least beggars don't have to deal with Jehovah's Witnesses, do they? Anyway. That was five. Was that a joke, that, that last one? Yes, it was. Was that a joke, Dorian? A slightly one. observational, I suppose. But nice one. There was humour there. And I enjoyed that, them. That, that was uh, 25 seconds. Well done, Dot. Pleasure's all mine. I was enjoying an orange during that... Uh, mm, a very orange. fragrant orange, and I'd just like to tell you that uh, Vic is today is wearing a blue teddy. Yeah. Well, I really can recommend oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic fruit. Anyway, the next record I is, I believe... Um, I if you know, can take that orange out your mouth. Ah, now, soon. the next record is uh, Pulp with Babies. <laughs> And there we 
have it, Pulp, with uh, Babies. Before that, we heard Dorian Crook with some of his jokes. We'll be getting into a few of those a bit later on. And, Bob, if you don't mind me saying, this Bible of yours is uh, it's a, bit, it's a bit hard. Becoming a bit of an irritant? Yeah. Well, gives it back. I could do with a good read, actually. Well, yeah. Anyway, I'll read this while you introduce the uh, next guest. What are you doing? You? Eat, what are you eating? I'm going to re eat an orange and read the Bible. Right, OK, then. Well, now we've got uh, John, who's the minister who provided us with the sermon this morning, which turned us all into a bit of a frenzy. It turned, certainly had me going. And uh, John, Minister John, you're a new actor, you're a poet. I beg your pardon? Well, your sermon, actually. Would you call it poetry? No, it's a sermon. I'm, uh, I'm going to perform it for you. And you're going to be doing that for us now? Yes, I am. Have you... Uh, been to, well, you've been to church, obviously. Have you come down from the excitement yourself? I'm still very, very excited, yeah. and I'm glad you enjoyed it yourself. And how do you feel about missing Sunday lunch? It's a sacrifice, but it's worth it. Well, mm. OK, then. Would you like to introduce this one yourself? Uh, yes, this is my uh, most recent sermon, and it's called The Evil Bull. Off you go, John. Oh, no! A volcano has erupted in my mansion! Whoosh goes the lava all over me shirt And it all slops down with leering vengeance Hot and sticky and horrible and runny And the thick black smoke spews up in the air Through this dimness a spectre emerges It's a great big bull with a horrible head And his eyes bug out and his lips is curled With two metal horns and high-heeled shoes <laughs> He emits the awful belch of wrath He emerges from the ground and he begins to shriek Well, he is big and brassy with golden legs I must fight this devil before he steals my eggs There is uproar in my mind and uproar in my lounge And my seventeen babies begin to howl Then he beckons to me and he bids me hark Oh, he's horrible, demonic, and he starts to spit I am the bull of death Have I got a prize for you, sir? I am the bull of death Have I got a prize for you, sir? Well, I couldn't resist so I clumped him with me shovel, and that spelled one thing, i.e. trouble. It didn't make him froth, and it never made him whistle. Why, he merely tittered and began to sing. He said, yin, 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 I am not thin. Yin, 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 I am not thin. Then I wrestled with him. I wrestled him, I say. I stuck the boot in, and he stuck his hoof in. My, how I struggled against his talons of destruction. And then the beast said, come with me to Paris. Why not come with me to Paris? Come with me to Paris. Come with me to Paris. Off then I trekked into the hell hole, looking like a nutter and feeling kind of dreamy. I got to Paris, I had a look about, I watched the telly, I ate some jelly, I listened to the rumble in my big fat belly, I donned my bonnet and I lit up my pipe. At last I was a bull, so I began to hum. I said, yin, 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 I am not thin. Yin, yin, I am not thin. Thank you very much. Uh, wow, that just takes me back to this morning. That's quite that was incredible. So exciting, especially the middle bit about Paris, which is the one that sent me AWOL. Yes, it certainly did. Yes, indeed. Anyway, hang on. What's this? Here we are. Here's the jingle. <laughs> Hello, you're listening to Radio Risen Mortimer. Uh, let's make Sunday a fun day. We're joined now uh, by Otis Redding and Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Welcome, hello, uh, Otis, Marvin. All right, Vic. Yes. Hello, Vic. How are you doing? Hello, Bob. All right, now, we come here to tell you about our disaster. We yeah, booked a coach. A disaster, yes. We booked a coach to see the Linda Lasardi Road Show. Oh. Aye. Yeah, well, anyway, we got on the coach. Hey, if you can call it a coach. Uh, it's more like a, a van with windows. Yes, yeah, so like an elongated van or something. But anyway, it's a coach, really. Yeah, well, I suppose so. Anyway, it was very disappointing. There was no video, no refreshments, and the driver kept trying to cuddle Otis. Yes, he did. If you could call it a cuddle, it was more like a sort of... More of a grope, oh, type, really. No, it was a very tight grip he had. Anyway, with. we arrived at the ferry terminal. Yeah, if you can call it ferry terminal. That's right. It just seemed to be where the ship's docked. Yeah. And the brochure, if you could call it a brochure, yeah. it's more like a 
like a pamphlet, wouldn't it? If you could or, call it yeah, a pamphlet, well, not like a leaflet. Well, yeah, with the sort of like writing on one side. If you could call it writing, right. it's more of a scroll. More of a scroll, really. Anyway, we'd been promised that we would cross the channel by a luxury yeah, ferry. If you can call it a channel, it's more like a sort of like a 20 mile stretch of seawater. Yes, that's a channel, it is. Yeah. Oh. It should have said in the brochure, well, I agree, I you know. know. Anyway, the entertainment on the, <coughs> excuse me, ferry was provided by the cabaret band, Scarlet Fantastic. And, and they, they were fantastic. They certainly were. But the show was ruined by a certain Mr Julian Cope, who kept shouting out. Uh, uh, yeah. I am Julian Cope, who shouted money. I could sing better than you with me eyes shut. Well, uh. perhaps you can, Mr Cope, because you've been in the business a little bit longer, haven't you? But remember, there was a time when you couldn't sing with your eyes closed. That's right. Well, we arrived in France, if you could call it. France. Right. Well, what would you call it then? All right, France. But anyway, Mr. Cope led us all down the Ash Street shouting, that's the best butchers. butchers. Uh, this Just wait at the hypermarket. Uh, Don't forget your postcard. Uh, yeah. See, so, I thought he was a flaming tower guard, something, didn't he? That's right, yeah. Anyway, we booked in yeah, our... I'll tell you what. Man. Well, shut your mouth. Why don't you shut your mouth? Uh, <laughs> that's so funny, Otis. Yeah. You should join a funny show. Well, I should do. We, we booked in. Funniest. Yeah, we booked in our hotel. If you can call it a booking. Yeah. Mr. Cope just shouted out everyone's names. Yeah, and just, like an hello, hello accent. Yeah, and just threw sets of keys. He was drunk, very clearly drunk. Anyway, we were in room 72, and yes, you've guessed it. Mr. Cope was right next door, banging about and falling over with his medicine ball. Yeah. Shouting, I am Julian Cope, and I'm in room 73. Yes, if anyone could care less. Yeah. So we arrive at the Parc de Francais, which was the venue for Linda's Roadshow, right. only to discover that the tour operator had not provided tickets. Yeah, so we had to watch, like, from a distance. If you could call it a distance, more like 20 yards. Yeah, that's a distance, really, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, she so. bounced on the stage, if you can call it a stage. Yeah, if you could call it a little outside, it didn't look much like it, Meg. Well, well thank like you very Jordan much Cole, indeed, Otis. That's a oh, fascinating sorry, story of disaster. Yes, thank you, uh, Otis. So let's move on now with an old tune, a great tune. It's by Backman Turner Overdrive and it's called This Is A Song. and Bob have had to pop out to stock up with oranges. So it's councillors Cox and Evans back here with you. That's right. Now what you can't see is that councillor Cox is actually half submerged in a barrel of turps. That's right, and have been for the last six years. Now, play tell us, councillor Cox, why is that? Well, uh, six years ago the doctor told me that I should stand submerged in a barrel of turps. Every what, day. What was the actual problem you attended the doctor with? Well, I, I don't know. Didn't ask him. He's a doctor. He knows. He just told me to stand in the turps. Who is this doctor? It's me doctor. But where did you find him? He was in the doctor's surgery around the back of Fleming, Hardy and Willis. What, in the street, Councillor Cox? Well, no, in the stock cupboard. Oh, dear. It's that one who's married to the... I don't ask a doctor. He's in charge if he tells me to stand in turps. I will do. <laughs> Oh, yes, and you're probably right, too. Having said that... Well, my wife changes the turps every day. She's very good. She drains it off, replaces it, and but I must say that my legs resemble a pair of her tights at the moment. They do, they're very thin. Very floppy, indeed. They are floppy. Very floppy. Is this the doctor who ran off with that engine woman with bad breath? That's him. Oh, dear me. Hey, 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 what are you fellas doing? I'm sorry, we were just filling I'll in. I'll clear off. You've done your bit. We've got our bag of oranges Yes, now. thank you very much indeed. At this point, we'd uh, like to play another record, would we? Yes, we'd like to play a record. Well, um, listen to this song. I don't know what it might be. No, do I know mean? what it's going to listen to this song because it contains vital information about the inflammatory glands in your neck. It's by Code and it's called Rich and Strange. Lunchtime with Reeves and Mortimer. 
That's right, you're listening live to Reeves and Mortimer on this Sunday afternoon, and the time is nearly 20 to 2. That's right. Now, uh, we've got a new guest on for you now, and new to us anyway. He's called James Brown, and he's about to launch a new magazine called Loaded. James, hello. Morning, fellas. Hello, hello. and tell us about uh, Loaded, then. What's it all about? Oh, it's for the uh, young hip cats on the rampage. Yeah, yeah. As, you know, like yeah, yourselves. yeah. What sort yeah. of market is it aimed at then? Yeah. Young fellas. Yeah. Yeah. With a thirst for life. Yeah. 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 Like a bit of yeah. fancy behaviour. Will yeah. it have football in it? A bit of football, a bit uh, of sex, a bit of. When you say sport. sex, pictures of sex or just talk sexy about sex? Sexy football. Well, also that sort of thing. Pictures of footballers having sex. Nothing too vulgar though. No. Well, that's a crazy no, idea. Bad, yeah. No, it is a genuinely a new magazine coming out and it looks great. I've seen the dummy issue and it has uh, pictures of sex and also has pictures ah, but of. Not too vulgar. Oh, not, not too vulgar if you just take a glance. Not so, of course. But that's James, and we've actually invited James here as well to talk about Loaded, to ask us a few questions, in fact, to interview us. Um, we paid him for this, so carry on with an interview, James. Let's Obvious see how it's done. Obviously, we'll be doing a lot of investigative journalism, so uh, how's your weekend been going? Mine's been going great up to now, uh, James. I've had my mum and dad down, and uh, we had a lovely time after a curry last night. Did you have a bit of a laugh with your mum and dad? Yeah, it was great. You know, the curry made us laugh a lot. You see, I asked you that question, we've got an interview here. I don't like how it's going. You butted well, in, though, didn't you? I do apologise, James. It's not going very well, this Carry on. <laughs> What about rampaging? Are you, do you have a thirst for life, fellas? I often rampage about you through shake fields. You do, don't What you? about you, Bob? Yes. Um, Where are you known to take the net off? Well, I don't really. I, um, I I'm don't... a very much pub man, you know, lounge lizard type character. You like to cause a bit of a rumpus, so don't you? I have caused a, a, a rumpus in the past, yes. Sir. Is your life, you know, is that it? Rumpus and rampage. Rumpus and rampage. Is, rampage. Yeah. is that what the young'uns like these days? Well, we're very casual, calm men. We're too old for rampaging. And we're very well mannered as well, James. If you don't mind me saying, you should take your feet off the table. Things are coming a little too calm in the magazine world, though, aren't they? No, mm. I enjoyed the magazine very much. I'd just like to point out that James Brown, the so-called interviewer, was sitting here with his feet up on valuable equipment, <laughs> wearing dark glasses, clearly hasn't combed his hair today. No, not at all. But he does not mind Ryan Giggs. There's a bit of a musky smell in here as there well. Is. There's a smell of some very old stories here. I think we should finish this interview now. Yes, let's move on by once again going to Dorian Crook for a joke challenge. Now, to this time we're asking for... Um, well, we'll go back for 30 seconds, but we want six, seven jokes. Seven, seven jokes, jokes in 30 no seconds. No problem. Talking of rampaging, you know, the other day I ran through a nice open field in my bare feet. You should have seen it when I did it in the whole bear costume, boys. <laughs> One. Well, yes, uh, I was married twice, you know. Not many people know that. Married twice, no children. Obviously, you can't marry children. It's not allowed, is it? But uh, Two. My first wife didn't understand me, I'm afraid. She was Chinese, didn't speak a word of English. Hardly surprised. Three. But my second wife was strange. The day we got married, she was carrying another man's child. She could have put it down while I put the ring on her finger, wouldn't you have thought? Can't give it. Can't give it? Carry on, you've got 12 right, seconds then. left. Hey, well, no, he hasn't the next time's up. He signs a I wrote to her 700 times. She married the postman. Get out of oh, it. Well, I don't Honestly, know. Honestly, I can't listen to a song. Hey, hang on, though. What? Before we go into the song, Dorian, uh, give us a weather update. But, I, mean, I tell jokes. The weather, the weather, the weather. Uh, scattered cloud at 2,000 feet, becoming 600 feet on the hills. Temperature about 6, few point rising to 3. Maybe a bit of coastal fog later. To pressure around about 1,012 millibars, I should think. Just off the top of my head. And is that in this country? That's here. Oh, right. Well, that's what we right wanted, Dorian. Yes. London area. Thank you very much, Dorian Croker, with the, the weather. Now, the next song is called There Was a Day. It's actually um, a tribute to George Best and his wonderful career, and it was uh, written and performed by Andy Lambas and Roddy Matthews. A tribute to Georgie Best. I get out of my head But I wake up back in my life The world that seems so open passes by. I get out of my bed. Andy Lucas, and there was a day, and I'm sure he's quite right, there was a day once. There was a day. I'm sure of it. I'm sure I've seen a day. Pat. Yes, you're right, Mick. I'm sure I've seen one. And t Anyway, quote of the day, a child in need is a child indeed. Mm, that's a nice that? one. That's a good sentiment, isn't it? Anyone else over there got a quote? Never drink poison. Nice well, uh, one. No, well, I think that's probably more informative <laughs> rather than mm. a quote, isn't it? It's common in... Info in no. Oh. Dorian Crook, the human joke like box, say, irritating big... everyone around the table at the moment. <laughs> My quote is, I'd like to put a big shout going out to the neighbourhood watch posse. Keep it locked, guys. 
Nice yeah, one. That's a very good quote. Well, well you that, know, that, that'd be appropriate in Whitby, wouldn't it? Whitby, where's Whitby? Up north. <laughs> we were debating earlier, weren't we? Where, where is Whitby? Is it in it's, Cleveland it's or is it in Cleveland. Yorkshire? Well, I say Cleveland, no. Previously Yorkshire. Previously Yorkshire, but uh, Cleveland and the Independence got something to say about that today. It's well, there's some lovely materials around the table. I'm wearing a felt garment. Yes. <clears throat> I'm wearing uh, leather. A, a Johnny Cash outfit today. Mm. I'm sporting corduroy. I too have corduroy. Two corduroys, one felt and one uh, leather. Uh, earlier on today, I had suede on. Really? <laughs> I was just dancing around to them in my front room, you know. Well, right now, to the doors. Just we're going to be having corduroy on, and here is corduroy <laughs> with Motorhead. We're back, uh, you're back with the Reeves and Mortimer live on Sunday. Hello there. Hello there. Would you like to do it, madam? It's only a little. <laughs> it won't take <laughs> a minute hey, of your hey, time hey, up. Hey. What? Oh, you're getting crude now. I do apologise. Well, now we've had uh, Dorian Crook, Dot Crook, the joke smith. What's your favourite joke, Dot? Do the well, one about the alarm. That's the alarm went off in my car today. Very annoying. They drove it up to their recording studio in North Wales and made one of those terrible jangly guitar records. Still, luckily, there's more, there's more. Go on. I can't we don't myself. want any more! Oh, all right, then. Yeah, get the guy out of here, he's driving me crazy. Hey, go and get a burger! Well, well, we'll have a quick interview, I'll have a few words with you now, uh, Doc. Yes, please. How do you get your ideas? Well, they're all in the uh, Magistrate's Sa <laughs> yeah. Stationery oh, yeah. Office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Majesty's yeah. Stationery oh, Office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you yeah, want yeah. to know? Oh, yeah. He's covered it's in your an rock and roll. It's an index file oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. tabulated Let, and Let, indexed Let, yeah. code number 28615. Allow him to answer. Sorry about that. Sorry, I wasn't listening. You're a gag teller. Do you think alternative comedy is on the way out? Oh, undoubtedly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. yeah. People, yeah. Oh, really? People oh, yeah. don't right. want yeah. someone yeah. coming yeah. up oh, to Oh, yeah. Them. Yeah. Is well, comedy the new rock and roll? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you <laughs> no. think of Jack D then? Yeah? Do you like him? Yes. Well, I think he should lighten up a bit. Really? Well, thank you oh, very yeah. much, Dorian Crook. That oh. was really very informative. Wasn't that great? And the next tune we'd like you to uh, agree with is... Let's get down. And it's the cult, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. With... It's the cult! It's the cult with the wild-hearted son. Wild-hearted son. Wild-hearted son. Welcome Hello. back. Yes, you're back with councillors Evans and Cox. And you've been listening to God. Who? The, the cult. Now, uh, Vic and Bob have popped out for the final sack of oranges. So we're just covering for a few brief moments. And, and I'd, I'd like to ask councillors. I must say, there's a lot of pith in here. There is a lot of pith, but a beautiful tangerine smell. Now, councillor Cox. There's pith everywhere. Tell us a little bit more about your work for the Blood Transfusion Service. Oh, well, the blood transfusion service, yes. yes. Well, I go around on my push bike, uh, transporting uh, blood in my saddlebag to the scenes of various accidents. Some of it drips out and uh, can cause a slippery wheel. But, right. Uh, I expect it could cause brief amusement it as well. to pass us by. And I must say, yes. uh, more amusement because my legs are very flimsy, as you know. They are, Dad. About 30 it. denier. Well, if right. you're familiar with that... Phrase. Yeah, now, if it's can bread... make pedalling rather amusing. Yes. Now, I saw Bill Oddy on the way in, sat on a great big blue egg. Oh, did you? Quite extraordinary. What a thing to say. What <laughs> a comical thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Cox. Now, if it's a fruit pudding you want, try lions fruit puddings. That's right. And, uh, Councillor Evans, if you don't mind me saying, I think we're running out of things to say here, so we'll move on to another record. It's yes. probably the final record of the day. Well, our day. It's the fall, and I'm going to Spain. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You've been listening to me, Vic Reeves. And myself, Bob Moore. 
Timmer. Timmer. And we've been speaking to our um, minister, John Houston Irvin. Yes, and to the human joke box, Dorian Crook. And, of course, to James Brown and his new magazine, Loaded. Loaded, which comes out very shortly. Uh, well, have you enjoyed any... yourself, Vic? Yes, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself, have you? Yes, the oranges were so and got... sweet. Any holiday recommendations? I can certainly recommend Whitby for all your holiday, rec holiday recommendations. Requirements? Yes. Even. Yes, if you want a holiday, holiday Whitby. That's right, thank you very much. And we're going to hand over now to The Rock Show with Claire Sturgis. So if you're <laughs> ready to rock... <laughs> rock!